Hey, I'm Jake, and for this video, I'm going to be sharing with you guys a way in which you can streamline Logic Pro's piano roll to kind of act like Ableton's piano roll with the scale feature. So for those of you without Ableton, I'm going to be showing you what that looks like because I, you know, I use both. So here is a MIDI track. I'm going to make a MIDI region and I'm going to click scale. And you'll notice that it says E. I can choose the note and the mode. E Dorian is what I chose. And now you'll see that the MIDI roll, things are highlighted in a shaded color. Now, if I click scale, it locks everything. What makes this really cool? Well, if you're making a triad, so this says E, this says G, and this says, this says B, it's always going to follow that same shape, right? It's one note after the other, and you make a perfect triad or perfect chord. So now if you move this, it's always going to be a perfect triad, whether it's a diminished chord, a major chord, it will be in the scale. And I think that this makes writing notes really, really fast. The other thing is you can create melody lines and you can move them accordingly. And it just, you now look at melody shapes rather than thinking about, am I hitting the right note? If I were to unclick the scale feature and try to make a chord, I might have a wrong note, right? So this is the feature that I'm going to want to try to emulate in Logic Pro. So here's Logic Pro. I'm going to make a MIDI region. This is an empty track. There's nothing on it. And I'm going to double click this. The first thing that you want to do is draw in a note for every range, the whole range of the piano roll, right? You don't have to be perfect about it. You can just do something like this. There we go. So the reason why we're doing this is because when we highlight everything, we press Command A. What we're going to do is actually use a scale quantize feature. So you notice how when I click, when I highlight all the notes, the piano roll on the left hand side, the notes, they get highlighted in blue. What we're going to do is use the scale quantize feature. And all of a sudden, we're in C sharp major, the notes fit to the corresponding scale. This is the reason for doing this. So I'm going to press off again, and now we have the full MIDI. I am going to press Command A to select all the MIDI notes, and I'm just going to shrink them as far off as I can. So they should barely be, they should not have visual clutter. Now I'm going to make another instrument, and I'm going to bring in a keyboard. I'm going to make a region. The next step is to make sure on the left hand side you select the instrument that you want to draw MIDI in. So in this case I'm selecting electric sheep synth. I'm going to left click the MIDI region that I want to edit in and I'm going to hold shift and left click the dummy clip. Let's actually rename this. Okay so there's the dummy clip. I'm going to do that again. So left click, shift, left click, and I'm going to press P to bring up the piano roll. Now, let's choose harmonic minor, and let's choose A flat as the note. I'm going to press Command A, and I'm going to press Q. Now, we can follow this, right? But that's one one way to get one step further is to click this guy over here, which is the collapse mode. Now I've set that as a custom key command as control option X. So what happens now is it skips all of the notes that are not in the scale because we've used the MIDI dummy clip to identify what will be collapsed. So now the MIDI is collapsed only to the scale quantize mode that you've selected. So now when I draw, I have perfect triads, right? I'll just 
lower the volume here. Now, if I double click, there are a few things that you need to know. If I double click the MIDI region with electric sheep synth, you'll see that the dummy clip MIDI notes disappear. There's a kind of a quirk to this, because if you draw in anything, <clears throat> it collapses to the range, right? So the collapse mode, basically, it only shows what notes you've actually drawn in. So now if I double click, that will bring me back to the multi MIDI mode, which is why I've selected the dummy clip and electric sheep. And I just toggle this collapse mode on and off again. And we're back to where we were, right? So that's why I set up a custom key command. You might want to set up one for yourself. And what's really cool about this is that if we make a melody line, we can actually copy this whole thing. And when I move this, it always sticks to the scale. And it's, it's actually a lot easier to draw. The cool thing now is that if I double click this again, I press shift down, I can select all the bottom notes, I can invert it, right? You have all the key commands if I highlight this. It tells you the chord over here at the top left of the piano roll section. Now, for those of you that want to see what the note is when you're drawing in the MIDI and you don't want to look at the left hand side, you can press view and just click note labels and it will tell you the notes that you're drawing in along with the velocity. You do have to zoom quite a bit though. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is I actually am quite OCD and I find these little MIDI dummy notes to be quite annoying. So we need to solve that. In order to solve this, we're going to we're going to need to hide the MIDI notes of the dummy clip. So I'm going to open it up and I'm going to bring it to bar two. Yeah. Now, in the MIDI region, I'm going to press command A and I'm going to drag these guys outside of the MIDI clip. And there they are. I'm going to close the piano roll and I'm going to drag the dummy clip back to bar one. And now I'm going to left click electric sheep synth because I'd like to edit on this instrument. I'm going to left click the MIDI clip here and I will press shift left click for the dummy clip. I will press P to open up the piano roll. And now the MIDI notes have disappeared from the dummy clip. But when I press the collapse mode, everything's back to normal. In the next part of the video, we're going to talk about saving this and how to get a little bit creative with it and probably editing with even more instruments. And I'll talk about some of the quirks that I've found that you might need to keep in mind. But before we get to that, I'd like to share a bit about our sponsor. I'd like to take a moment to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. You guys already know they're an online learning community. They host thousands of awesome classes for creators and it lets you explore new skills and deepen existing ones. So Skillshare is curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads and they're always launching new premium classes. They cover everything from animation to illustration, video editing, creative writing, and music production. Now, I am not a great marketer. I also happen to be an avid listener of Gary V. So I'll be checking out Gary Vaynerchuk's class called Context is Key, Social Media Strategy in a Noisy Online World. I think that social media obviously plays a big role in today's economy, and I believe that Gary V is a great person to learn from, especially when it's on Skillshare's structured platform. Now, Skillshare has been kind enough to provide me with a few months of premium membership, and the first 1,000 people who use the link in the description will be receiving a one-month free trial to Skillshare Premium. Okay, so saving, saving this. The most natural thing to do, obviously, is to try to export, right? Try to export the MIDI file. The problem with this is that it'll give you this error when you drag the dummy MIDI notes outside of the region. It'll say 
just change all upbeat events to position one, 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 one. So if you're okay with having the MIDI notes visible when you're doing your multi edits, what you can do is just drag it back and right click the MIDI region, go to export and export as MIDI file and just save it somewhere where you can just drag it back into logic. I tend to like bookmarking things. So if you, if I drag it, I go over here and then I find, find out where I save the file. I right click wherever it's saved and I say bookmark whatever folder, wherever it's, where its destination is. Then I go to bookmarks and I have mine saved over here, MIDI export and I just drag it in and there you go. Now, if you want to keep the MIDI notes invisible while you're doing the scale lock, you're just going to want to save it as a template. That is the most efficient way in my opinion. So you just go over to file, you go to save as template, and then you just name it accordingly and then you can open it. So let's talk about editing even more instruments. So we have the sound over here. Great, so let's add a piano and just make some bass notes. I'm gonna color this differently. Make sure you select the left hand channel that you want. So in this case, I wanna edit the grand piano so it should be highlighted in brighter gray. And then you just select the MIDI track that you wanna edit in. But to view the other MIDI channels, you just hold shift and you left click accordingly you press P and now you can see everything, right? So that's one of the quirks. You're always going to have to select things properly to see things in scale. I'm just going to select these guys. I'm going to press command C to copy, go over here with my play header to the beginning and I'm press, I'm going to press command V that will paste it. And I'll just bring this down an octave by pressing shift option down, right? So now I'm gonna double click the piano, command A, and I'm just gonna force legato these guys. Right, so that's, I mean, this is a pretty bad example, but you get my point. Now, what happens when you copy and paste this and you wanna write more? So this is one of the drawbacks to this technique. If you were to copy and paste the dummy clip, right? And then you join the tracks, you will find the MIDI notes back again. So my advice is that you just copy and paste the regions that you actually want to write MIDI in. And for your dummy clip, you can just select it and press P. You don't have to stretch it or duplicate it. And you have the same function. Alternatively, you can just extend the MIDI region. But when you copy and paste it, and then let's say I join these, and then I join the dummy clips, they will show up. So now let's talk about some creative applications. Now this is gonna get quite nerdy, so I'm, I really appreciate it if, you, if you're if you still staying up to this point. Um, we are right now in the scale quantize mode of A sharp harmonic minor, right? And this is where I think the tool's really cool for people who might not know too much about music theory. Um, maybe they don't have a MIDI keyboard where they can play uh, extensively. One thing that you can do is something basic. You can press Shift N on the dummy clip and you can rename it according to the scale, right? Harmonic minor. And I'm gonna select this track, the dummy clip track, and I'm gonna press Control, Option, Command, D. And that will give me a duplicate, right? So now this letter shows up beside, to the right of the name, dummy clip, on the track header. I'm gonna click the arrows, I'm gonna press A. Right now it says A sharp harm harmonic minor for both. You can also click it to show inactive regions. Now, one thing that you can do, I'm gonna hide that again, is just change scales. So 
let's say, okay, I'm going to press Command A on the dummy clip. And I'm going to press, uh, I'm going to choose maybe F natural minor. So now the MIDI changes, right? We see it from the blue highlighted. I can then duplicate this MIDI region, make a, a track alternative as well. So I can go back to the old one and I can just begin changing things up. So I'm going to say that this is, what is this scale mode? F natural minor, F natural minor. So this serves, the dummy clip now serves as like a memory timestamp when you're transposing in keys, which is really important when you're, depending on the music you're writing, right? Some ranges might work better for the vocalist or maybe your bass sound, depending on what oscillator you use, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm gonna double click these guys. I'm gonna press command A and then I'm gonna just, I'm just gonna quantize and I'm gonna click the collapse mode. And now I can just set things up. Now, how do I know how to rearrange things? Well, we just said earlier, a triad in this view with the dummy clip with collapse mode, a triad is one note and then there's a space in between the second note, space in between the third note. That will give you a minor and major triad depending on the scale that you're in and what degree you're in, right? So the all, for those of you who might not know your music theory, a C major chord, for example, <clears throat> there's three notes in between, which are these notes. There's three notes in between C and E. So to play a C major chord, you have to have that spacing. That's why they call it a major triad or a minor triad. Now, if you were to play D minor, the reason why it's called D minor is because instead of having three notes in between the D and the F, you have two notes. So that creates a minor triad. So therefore you're in a minor chord. You erase all of those things that you might need to memorize when you're using this method. Um, so it's, it's just a handy tool. Now everything's visual. So I can see that, oh, this is too squashed. Let me just... fix all of these, right? So I so basically it's a good way to test things out. And if you don't like it, well, you have your track alternatives. So you can click the arrow over here, show inactive, and you can just toggle between the previous and current most recent MIDI changes. Now I'm gonna to toggle back to A. I know I'm in A sharp harmonic minor. So I just click the dummy click, press command A, and I go back to A sharp. Uh, harmonic minor. There you go. It's A sharp harmonic minor now. And the really cool thing about this is that if you use this method and you toggle on and off the collapse mode, you can also study the spacing of the chords and figure out what you like. And it's a great way to familiarize yourself with chord voicing, things like that, while being able to compose pretty fast if MIDI drawing is your thing, kind of like I, I know that a lot of people using FL Studio, it's it's a really, really huge strength that that DAW has, and Ableton now has that scale lock feature. This is a workaround for Logic Pro. So I hope this video helped you, and take care. Oh yeah, uh, don't, don't forget to subscribe.